Hi, welcome back to my channel. I thought today I would share with you um, a little pack of things that I take out in my bag on a day-to-day -day basis to help me reduce the amount of single-use plastic that uh, I consume during the day. Now, I've been doing this for a good couple of years, if not longer, a lot of these things that are in this pack. And I've found that it has made a difference with the amount of plastic that I use. And it has also encouraged other people to start a conversation about what I'm using and what I have. And every time I get any one of these things out of my bag, people ask a question. They ask, where did you get it from? What is this? And how does it work? Why do you use it? So it's great to start a conversation and make people slightly more aware. So I'm going to work my way through. It's all over here. I'm going to work my way through it and show you the different things I have. Talk a little bit about where I got them from and also alternatives that you can use yourself. Now, before we start, what I did want to say here was that you don't have to go out and buy special things. We have tons of things in our kitchen that we can use um, or in our home that we could use instead of buying something separate. Because, of course, we want to be more sustainable. We want to do things that are right for the planet but over consuming even ethical things often isn't necessary so i'm going to grab my things come back and show you what i have in my bag every day millions of single-use plastic bottles and coffee cups and coffee lids get used they get used for just a few minutes maybe half an hour and then they get thrown away and not to be used again so one of the first things that I certainly have done for many years and that you can do too is to get some kind of reusable um, vessel for your drinks. Now, I like to drink coffee. I start my day with a cup of coffee that I've made at home, which I take out in this Bodum keep cup here. Now, these are really easy to get hold of. They're really robust. They keep your drink very hot or cold, depending on what the drink is that you've put in there. So that's something that I would really recommend. Now, you don't have to go out and spend a fortune on something like this. In fact, I got this Bowdoin Cup quite some time ago. They last for a long time, and I got it on a discount in the shop. So keep an eye out for them. But you'll find nowadays that many coffee shops sell their own um, keep cups with the branding on them, depending if you want that or not, or ones from other companies, and give you a discount if you use them in the shop. Now, I take this in and I get this refilled in most of the coffee shops that I go to. Nobody as yet has refused, um, certainly in the last couple of years, refused to fill my keep cup with a new cup of coffee. So I use that one. I also have this bamboo cup, um, which I got in Berlin last year. I don't use it as much because I find that, and this is me, not the cup's fault, but I find that sometimes it spills a little bit when I'm drinking from it. But this is a good alternative. It's bamboo. This one's metal and silicon. Um, this one is bamboo. Now, yes, they do have, um, I'm not sure if this is plastic, but certainly the Bowden one, have a plastic lid. But of course, I'm, I've used this hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. Um, and I'm going to continue to use it hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. So its lifespan is long. Um, so it's far alternative to using the coffee cups that you get in the coffee shops. So they're my keep cups. When it comes to water, I have this metal water bottle, which I bought for just a very tiny amount of money from Lidl a good couple of years ago. It's metal, it has a good seam on the top, and it's insulated, so it keeps the water really, really cold. Now, again, I fill this up where I can. We're very lucky in Copenhagen that Hawthorne, who are the water board, um, have sponsored a number of water fountains, public water fountains, around in the city. Um, you can find a map for them. It's a Google map. I'll, I'll link it down below. So if you're traveling around in Copenhagen, you can quickly get that up on your phone, find where there's a nearby one. But I've also spotted that in public spaces, such as libraries, shopping centers, even um, there is a small supermarket in Copenhagen main station, and they have a water fountain in there that you can fill your water bottle for free. They also sell uh, reusable bottles in there that you can get for the first time. Um, I will say it's not terribly cold that water um, when I filled it up today but it is water so I refill this regularly throughout the day and I found also that in coffee shops um, if I ask them to refill it they will will refill it for me. Um, so just ask if they say no they say no there's no harm done but it also raises awareness that people want to refill uh, water bottles. So they are the, the sort of the two um, vessels, I guess, that I take out for drinking from. And I just shove them in my bag. They don't take up much space. Obviously, when the water bottle is full, it's quite heavy. But then I'm drinking it and it's going down and I'm refilling it. So they're the water bottles. Next up, 
is my nutty little kit that I have here. Now this bag that I keep uh, the contents in, which I'm going to show you in a moment, is a bag that I bought about 10 years ago when my son was a baby. I bought a couple of them from a maker on Etsy and they're lined, um, they've got like a kind of waterproof lining inside them, which was perfect when he was a baby because I could put nappies in there or you know anything that he'd, he'd made wet or mucky, uh, swimming trunks, what have you, I could just shove them in there and they didn't leak out in the rest of the bag. Now, these, like I say, are 10 years old and I still use them. Uh, we have a larger one, which we'll often take if we go to the beach or somewhere where there's going to be wet swimming trunks that we don't want to um, carry them around, making things wet in our bags. So I use those and, of course, it's, it's supporting um, an individual creator or maker. So let's have a look and see what's inside. I'm going to tip it out down here and bring each item up one by one. Um, now, still on the, uh, the subject of drinks, I have these um, silicon coffee cup lids. Um, I bought these two years ago now, uh, I think it was a pack of five, and I carry two of them around in my bag. So there's one for me uh, if I want to have a drink and one if I'm with somebody else, so say my son has a hot chocolate or something like that. Now I know the coffee cups in uh, a lot of the coffee shops do contain plastic as well, but this is at least one step towards one um, less piece of, of single-use plastic. But increasingly a lot of the coffee shops here in Copenhagen are offering compostable coffee cups. Now, particularly, I know that Hotel Chocolat, the chocolate chain, chocolate shop chain, they do the compostable cups, lids, and also the little carry things. So, you know, look out for these things. Ask about them. If your local coffee shop is not using a compostable cup, ask them if it's something that they can look into. Um, it's possibly something that maybe they've not heard of, or if more people ask, then they will do something about it. So, these fit standard coffee shop coffee cups. Wash them, stick them in the dishwasher, wash them by hand, use them time and time and time again. They're super robust, so they're not going anywhere soon. So I can keep hold of those for a while. Also, um, I have these silicon straws. Again, I bought a five pack of them. Um, they come with um, like a kind of a pipe cleaner that you can clean them with. But again, you can stick them in your dishwasher and use them time and time again. So if we do get something like a smoothie or something that... that requires a straw though why anything really requires a straw you, you could ask us you know that question but so we have those so that means again um single straw isn't being used but make the effort when you order a drink if you don't want a straw say to the the person behind the counter i don't want a straw please or i don't want a lid um and you may have to repeat it because automatically they might stick the things in um but i think although these are alternatives to things Sometimes we have to look at, do we actually need the thing itself, alternative or otherwise? But nevertheless, I have these straws. Uh, there are a number, when I bought these, uh, which was a couple of years ago, there wasn't a lot of options available. But now there are loads and loads of different uh, reusable straw options. Bamboo, metal, um, I, I haven't seen them here, but I've heard of... Um, Pasta ones, so you, once you've drunk the drink, you know, they're completely biodegradable because they're uh, made out of pasta. So there are lots of alternatives, there are lots of places, and I've written a few uh, blog posts about these kind of products, which I'll link and you can take a look. But certainly, they're much more prevalent now as um, the general population are looking at alternatives. So that's the straw. Next, have these two plastic spoons. Now, again, yes, I appreciate they're plastic. These are... Um, Kids spoons that you can get this cutlery set from Ikea. Again, I bought these about 10 years ago and we're still using them now. Um, and we will continue using them for a very, very long time. The only reason we'll stop using these particular uh, spoons is if we lose them. So I have these. I keep them also in the pack so that if we do stop and have an ice cream when we're out and about in the summer, we don't need to take one of those single-use um, ice cream spoons. However, if you do take one of those single-use ice cream spoons, you can always wash it, put it in a little pack and use that again and again and again. Just because something is presented as single-use plastic doesn't mean it has to be single-use plastic. It is possible to keep using it. So we keep those and then just wash them, put them back in the pack. Still on the subject of cutlery, now I bought this uh, a while back when my son was still having packed lunches at school. And sometimes he would have a salad from home or something and he needed some cutlery to use. And I wanted to make sure that he didn't lose it, so it came in this little pack. When we open it up, you have two handle pieces. 
and then you have a fork, a spoon and a knife and you just slot them in and make them into cutlery. Now, you can't have a fork, a knife and a spoon at the same time, so you have to decide which two you want. And it also has the option of uh, making chopsticks, so there's two chopstick ends as well. So if you go out for sushi or something and you want chopsticks, rather than using, again, single-use ones, you can use these. And then it all fits into that little, pow no, little box that can stay in your bag and you're not going to use it. But like I said at the beginning of the video, you don't always have to buy something special to have reusable things when you're out and about. One solution, now these are dinky kids knife and fork and spoon from Ikea, but you could just take a knife, fork and spoon from your kitchen drawer and get a cloth napkin such as this one. Um, again, I think this is from Ikea. Um, I'm not sponsored by Ikea, obviously things come from there uh, that we have, but you can get these in any shop, supermarket, anywhere that does cloth napkins, and then you can just wrap up your cutlery in the cloth napkin, maybe get a bit of string or ribbon or something from a gift and just tie it around there, keep that in your bag, then you always have a um, knife, fork and spoon and something to use as a napkin. So that's a, a really good option where you've not had to go out and buy anything particular. You probably have these things in your home um, and they can be used time and time again. And that also, if I was going to, uh, would fit in, in my pouch there. So that's definitely um, a good thing to consider. So that would be my pouch that I take out and about with me. As you can see, it's not huge, not heavy. It doesn't take up a lot of space, even if you take a smaller bag out with you. Um, so that's the kind of little kit and every time I get this out people are so curious about it so that's that one shopping now when you go shopping you probably think oh, I'll just pick up a carrier bag a plastic bag um, now in a lot of countries in Europe you will be charged for using a plastic bag so it does make you think twice about picking it up but people do it and they may say oh yes I'll reuse the bag I'll use it as a bin bag I'll use it as this but really what how many times are you going to use that carrier bag? You're probably not going to be very using it very much. And um, I was watching the BBC programme about plastic with Hugh Fernley, Wittenstall and Anita Rani. And uh, Hugh went out to do watch it, do watch it. I'll put a link below. Uh, Hugh went out to a, a landfill site in, I think it was in Malaysia. And he found Sainsbury's carrier bags there. He found... Um, supermarket carrier bags from the UK been shipped all the way to Malaysia and they were still there and they're going to last forever so really the lightest thing out of all of this kit that you can take around with you is a reusable shopping bag now I have two that I normally carry this one is from uh, Lidl and was very very inexpensive and you can use it over and over and over and it just squishes up. It does have an elastic band to put around it, but I find that a little bit difficult to do. So we have a couple of these. I have one that I carry in my bag. My husband has one that he carries in his work bag if he stops at the supermarket on the way home. And also uh, we have like one of those book, uh, shoe cabinets in the hallway. We have a few other reusable carry bags just shoved in there. So if somebody's going shopping, when they get their shoes out, they can just grab one of these and take it with them. But the one that I love the most that I have is by a brand called Onya. It's an Australian brand. I've been buying their bags for probably the last 15 or 16 years, and they last a very long time. They are made to take quite a bit of weight. And my preferred one that they do is this little rucksack, um, which is fantastic for carrying heavy shopping because you can put it on your back. It's also great if my son goes on a school trip and he needs to take a packed lunch with him but doesn't want to take a big rucksack, he can take this, it weighs nothing. And the really fantastic thing about it is that it folds in on itself. You see how quickly I did that? Folds in on itself, drawstring, and then you've got this bag that you can neatly just shove in your laptop bag or in your bag that you carry around, your gym bag, whatever. So that takes up hardly any space at all. So I always have those, I always use them. I simply cannot remember the last time I picked up a supermarket carrier bag. Um, I literally cannot remember the last time. And recently, at my son's school, they asked if we could uh, donate some carrier bags that they needed for a project. I just didn't have them and I don't think they got many which is heartening in a way because it means that people are obviously refusing to use them. Um, the other thing that I have also from Anya 
um, again, not sponsored by on you, I just think they're a really great brand, are these. Now, it's a little bit like, you know, when uh, they do magic tricks and, and things come out, scarves come out, but these are little produce bags, little drawstring produce bags. So if you go to the supermarket and you're picking up, and you're lucky enough to have a supermarket that sells loose products, um, you can pop them in this, seal it up, uh, weigh them on the scales if need be, or just, just put it together like that, weighs hardly anything at all, and it's continually re can be continually reused. Just stick it in the washing machine when you're doing your normal washing, uh, give it a wash. Um, I also store things in the fridge in it sometimes, uh, like carrots or what have you, so it's a nice breathable cloth bag. And I think you get six in there, I seem to have four, so there must be two more knocking around somewhere in the house. But again, they just squish up, squish into this bag and then you carry them. Um, after school, earlier this week, um, my son went and got some uh, chocolate nuts and he used this bag for them. And people ask questions about it, not aggressive, angry questions. They say, what's that? And you, you can just tell them it's a reusable produce bag. So the more you're using these things, the more people are seeing you use them, then the more curious people are and see it as it's not a difficult alternative. It's not hard to carry some of these things around with you, if not all of them. Now, all of these things that I've shown you today reflect my lifestyle. I spend a lot of time... Um, on foot, out and about, walking around in the city, going to different events, different meetings, different things. So I like to have this stuff with me because it fits in with my lifestyle. But you might not want some of this, you might just want some of it, not all of it. But you know, do consider, or maybe some other things I haven't got here that fit in more with your lifestyle. But definitely consider these things. Um, nothing here has cost a lot of money. And a lot of these things I bought many years ago. So, you know, if you divide the cost of them by the number of uses, then they're basically, you know, they, they end up being almost free. So definitely consider having some of these. And just a little funny extra thing that I thought I would talk about today. Now, I write a lot and I'm quite old fashioned and I do like to write in notebooks. But thinking about it, if I'm using um, a biro, when I finish writing with that biro and the ink has run out, you don't refill it. They're not refillable unless you have a fountain pen. And then they just get chucked away as well. So one of the most sustainable things that you can use um, if you are writing and making notes and doing things such as I am are pencils. I know it sounds so old school and like we're at primary school, but a pencil, you just sharpen it and then the shavings, you know, they're natural, they disappear uh, they go into obviously into your bin, but they're, they're not taking up any space. And when you finish writing, the pencil's gone. Um, there's nothing left of it. And there are also a range of pencils, and I think they sell them. I've seen them in Tivoli and some other places. That when you get to the end of the pencil, the tip of the last bit of the pencil has a seed in it. Has a little seed um, sort of pouch embedded in the wood. So you can just go and bury that in your garden and then you'll get a plant from it, hopefully, if you've got green fingers. So that's just a little odd thing, but uh, something else that I always carry around with me, I have pencils um, and pencil sharpener, just sharpen the pencils and it just, you know, once they're gone, they're gone. And the pencil sharpeners I've had, I have one, a pencil sharpener that still sharpens from when I was at school. So obviously, you know, that was only 10 years ago. No, but seriously, it was, you know, like 30, 30 odd years ago, I bought that pencil sharpener and I still use it. So that's something to think about just carrying, if you need to make notes when you're out and about, carrying something out. And again, you know, they're really inexpensive to buy. You can just get them, stick them in your bag. And, uh, and use them until they exist no longer. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you've been interested to see the stuff that I take around and feel a little bit inspired about some changes that you can make to your own lifestyle to reduce the single-use plastic um, that is, you know, basically we're, we're drowning in at the moment in the world. So hope it was interesting. If you like this video, do go back, watch some of my other ones. I have some plenty of videos about sustainable living, also ones about living in Copenhagen. And do leave me a comment if you want to see more about this kind of thing um, and anything, any questions, anything you want me to cover. So uh, until next time, do think about subscribing so you don't miss out on anything and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.